We begin with new information from the Rio Grande. It is the missing Texas National Guard soldier who is presumed dead, drowned, trying to rescue two illegal immigrants from the river. He has been identified. 22-year-old Army Specialist Bishop Evans joined the National Guard in May of 2019 after serving in both Kuwait and Iraq. He was deployed at the southern border as part of Texas Governor Greg Abbott's Operation Lone Star. And on Friday, Evans bravely went into the water with that heavy current, the Rio Grande. He witnessed two illegal immigrants struggling in its strong currents. The search for his body is still underway. The Texas Rangers now say those two men he was trying to save were smuggling drugs. The silence on this from the White House has been deafening. Mm. But Governor Abbott spoke out. What has happened is, is a tragedy. Uh, it shows how dangerous it is on the border. Uh, it shows heroism uh, by uh, the member of the Texas National Guard uh, who was trying to save lives. Vivek, we don't know why the White House hasn't spoken yet. Perhaps they will make a statement. My hope, my prayer is that they're doing something more for Bishop Evans' family than we would ever know. Um, but it seems glaring to me. It does. I mean, this guy, first of all, let's just pause to think about this. This is a national hero. He's a 22-year-old American citizen living out his civic duty, saving the lives of two drug smugglers who he thought was, were going to drown. And I think that it's really easy for a lot of Americans to sit back on their couches and claim their views on immigration policy or border security policy when they don't have skin in the game. It's one of those moments that reminded me that actually our civic duties ought to be shared evenly. And you know what? If we did have more people serving in the National Guard, I think even civic service woven into what young people go through, you'd have skin in the game and have very different views on how we should be solving the border crisis than comfortably sitting in your homes and letting this 22-year-old serve his civic duty and die in the process. And I think that's what both Democrats and Republicans should be talking about. If I were Joe Biden, that's what I'd be highlighting today. Mm. You know, Kennedy, I, I don't know what's worse, the fact that none of what Vivek has said is happening right now that we know of, right? So we don't, we don't know what their plan is from the White House. Mm -hmm or potentially that they don't have one. No, a stunning lack of a plan is going to make things even worse, and it puts more people at risk. So far this year, there have been 11 people uh, who've washed up on the U.S. side of the Rio Grande and 12 on the Mexico side. And, you know, what, what Bishop did, which is so incredible, is he had a respect for human life. He was trying to save human life. He wasn't painting a picture. He wasn't judging their story or who they might be. He saw two people in trouble and put his own life at risk. And and uh, that is an enormous sacrifice and, you know, the kind of service that I, I think, to your point, we have to ask ourselves, would I do the same thing? Would I be brave enough? Would I value human life enough to do what he did? And uh, it is remarkable and I, I feel so badly for his family, but also you have to realize how proud they are in this moment. Like, they raised that kid right. Amen. Mm. Amen. I, I want to stay with the soldier for just a second. Texas Congressman Tony Gonzalez tweeted this. Brave National Guardsman removed his armor before jumping into the dangerous waters to save human life. Please pray for the families of all of those impacted. You know, Emily, when you see what he did, and, and Kennedy described it so well, he made a choice in that moment. He took off what he knew would protect him if bullets flew mm. so that he could go get the people that needed his help. He didn't know who he was saving. He had no idea. He risked it all. Yeah, he made the ultimate sacrifice based on the premise that all lives are created equal. He was truly selfless in that moment. You are right. He was an absolute national treasure, a hero. And my heart breaks for his family of this 22-year-old specialist Evans, who, by the way, before he was serving there in that, on, on the river, he has already served in Kuwait and Iraq at this mm -hmm. tender age of 22. And he was part of Operation Lone Star down there, which is Governor Abbott's response to the uncontrollable situation down there, the cruel situation that President Biden's policies have created. It is cruel for the migrants. It is cruel for, for law enforcement, border patrol. And it's, it's dangerous for, for our nation. It's owners. It's cruel for the yeah. sheriffs and every, everyone down there. It has been cruel and those lives are being lost. And in that county, there have been two drownings a week. And I fear with 42 being extinguished and now the expectation of a minimum of 18,000 migrants a day flooding over, that that's going to increase. But I hope and I pray that
that specialist Evans life that he sacrificed for this wonderful country that it won't be in vain that we will hear from our president that he will express an acknowledgement or a condolence for this national hero. Kaylee let's talk policy and I know you know this so well because you were with the former administration that that saw this coming and tried everything it could to turn things around put title 42 in place not going to sugarcoat this like we weren't having problems before but he really attacked this that is the opposite of what we've seen with the current white house it is and president trump did turn it around at the border yes there was a surge at a time but he found a way with a zero tolerance policy with title 42 with enforcing the laws on the books to bring that under control you have a president who with reckless abandonment is not only apparently going to roll back title 42 to appease aoc and the progressives uh, but elizabeth warren on the sunday shows this week she said quote that the, that the administration is putting plans in place, end quote, to deal with those demanding amnesty on the border now. Demanding amnesty. This is what Sa Senator Warren tells us so, is happening. So what I find so interesting about what she does and doesn't say as a progressive is she still doesn't give any details about what that's going to be. Right. right? Yeah. She, her job is to sell it because they, they're going to need those progressives. So we don't know what that means. We don't have a lot of time to find out. November is going to be here in a heartbeat. Sure, but what this president has shown us is he does not care about winning the independence, winning the suburban women. He cares about sticking with AOC. It's why he's doing what he's doing on student loans, probably going to go further, why he's rolling back Title 42. But if I could just say one yeah. thing quickly about Billy Evans, because the story broke here on Friday on Outnumbered. Um, a, a tragic story, of course, as we learned it. And I said then, you know, I hope the White House comes out and says something swiftly, expeditiously, yes. emphatically. They didn't. But I just want to remind everyone, because we also talked about the border whipping story here on Outnumbered, how the DHS secretary immediately essentially came out within, I think it was 48 hours said he was horrified uh, it troubled him profoundly Saki said people are understandably upset horrifying don't have the full context they were so quick to demonize border patrol where are they on a national guardsman they should have been out here immediately the politics are what matters though the politics all of it Vivek before we scoot to a commercial I, I just want to get your last thoughts on where the White House goes now because they are at yeah. the heart of this really they are at the heart of this and, and look I think that we got to separate s extending a pandemic era policy where they're actually using the pandemic as an excuse to extend all kinds of other mask policies mandates, the mask mandates a, a number yeah. of a number of other policies voting procedures across the country there's a number of things that have been ex that are extended now that the pandemic has passed so what I'd like to see is actual reform that allows them to remove illegal migrants quickly Quickly, perhaps not even just by extending Title 42, which is a pandemic era policy, but actually implementing new policies that are tailored to that problem. Because otherwise, they're going to use conservatives supporting this as a justification to roll out a bunch of other pandemic era emergency policies that actually need to be extinguished along with the pandemic. I'm going to ask our team in the booth can we roll that from Congressman Cuellar real quickly? Do we still have that ability? Yeah, here's a Democrat. They're listening to the immigration activists, but my question is. Who's listening to the men and women in green and in blue? And more importantly, who's listening to the border communities, the sheriffs, the landowners, the, uh, you know, the rest of the people that live on the border? Mm -hmm. Kennedy. Well, obviously, Senator Warren is not listening to Senator Sinema because they have vastly different views of what uh, comprehensive immigration reform would be. And, you know, someone like Kirsten Sinema, who is very much independent, uh, she stands with her state on this issue. And I, I think they view immigration differently mm -hmm. than they do in Massachusetts. Yeah, so you've got Cuellar in Texas, you've got Sinema in Arizona. I mean, they're on the border. Mark Kelly, <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. But we're all border states now, according to Senator Blackburn. She put that so succinctly yeah. because of the fentanyl that's, that's all over the country now coming across our southern border.